Wojak wants to be a famous artist, so he goes to school to get a modern art degree. He's an emotional wreck and constantly worries that he might be wasting four years of his life and $100,000 on a useless piece of paper that won't actually help him achieve his goals, but he keeps doing it because that's what everyone else is doing too. But then one day, Elon comes to town and he destroys Wojak's arguments with facts and logic, and he gives Wojak the secret golden advice that changes his life. With his newfound confidence, Wojak finally has the courage to drop out and start taking action to actually get a job as an artist. It's not easy, but a few years later, Wojak has his dream job working as an artist, and he's built up an amazing portfolio. And he's also started his own business on the side. Wojak looks back on his friends who went on to get art degrees, and none of them are working as artists. They're all working minimum wage jobs that have nothing to do with art. So as somebody who went all the way through the university system and got a doctorate, I know from firsthand experience that a lot of degrees are really useless, and they lead to high unemployment rates. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 college degrees with the highest unemployment rates. And we're going to start with number 10, which is philosophy and religious studies at 7.2% unemployment. One of Rome's greatest emperors, Tiberius, was once quoted as saying, a good shepherd shears his sheep. He does not flay them. And this statement was directed towards the generals and the elites that oversaw the regions of Rome. And it was meant as a warning to not excessively tax or treat the people in those regions unfairly. And it worked. Under Tiberius, Rome prospered and everybody from the peasants to the elites benefited from the situation. But it didn't last because just a short time after Tiberius' death, and as Rome devolved, the rich got richer and the poor got nothing for all the hard work. And they were basically being directly or indirectly enslaved. And this is the situation that is happening in the modern world as well. Although we don't often see direct slavery anymore, what we do see is indirect slavery in the form of debt. And the worst type of debt slavery is student loan debt because you can take out a ton of money at a young age and you can't default on it. Now society has programmed you to believe that the only way to be successful is to get educated. And I actually agree with that, but not in the same way that colleges mean. You see, colleges convinced you that the only way to get educated beyond high school was to go to college, which to be fair for a very long time was a great investment. Then they made college ridiculously expensive. They created a bunch of useless majors and they incentivized people to get bachelor's degrees where they wouldn't be able to get a job and therefore they'd have to go back to college and get a master's or a doctorate, which conveniently leads them to making double the amount of money. And this is exactly what's happened with philosophy and religious studies and many of the degrees on this list. You absolutely do not need to go to college to study these things. There are hundreds of options out there to study philosophy for free or at a fraction of the price. For instance, the best colleges in the world offer a lot of their curriculum completely free, like MIT OpenCourseWare. There's also an abundance of free or cheap resources online like YouTube, Google, Udemy, Skillshare, etc. And you can literally hire people that have doctorates in philosophy for one-on-one -on -one coaching at a fraction of the price. If you watch this video and really pay attention to what I'm talking about, you're going to have an unfair advantage over most of the people who don't do their research. And this is why 95% of people are not passionate about their jobs. And I'm sorry if I seem so serious about this, but I really do want to make an impression because this is an incredibly important choice that you're making at such a young age. Number nine is going to be film, video, and photography arts. And this one has a 7.3% unemployment rate. Now let's face it, for every Steven Spielberg or Martin Scorsese, there's 100 film graduates that are working at Starbucks. So this is an example of a degree that tries to teach you something that you can only learn by experience, only learn by actually doing it. Now I told this story on my channel before, but a friend of mine immigrated to the United States from Lebanon, and he did it in his mid 30s. And he completely changed his career from pharmacy technician to photographer. And he ended up getting an award for being the number one photographer in Las Vegas, which is a very competitive market. So he went from zero knowledge in photography in his mid to late 30s and completely broke as an immigrant to making six figures as a top tier photographer. And he did all of it within just a few years. Now, do you think he went and got a photography degree? No, of course not. He just looked up the best wedding photographers and then he tried to recreate their photos. Then he got to the point where he was good enough to actually do some weddings. He did some for free. And then after he did some free ones, he had a good portfolio built up. He started charging for them. And for the film side of things, I hear this story all the time of people who actually will try to create their own personal brand on YouTube and other social media platforms in order to try to break into Hollywood. So this is what Key and Peele did, for instance. And to be honest with you, this kind of blows my mind a little bit because Hollywood is kind of a dying industry and the creator economy is on the up and up. So I was on vacation a few weeks ago on this nice little surfing island called Shiargao, and I actually ran into two people who had been working 
working in Hollywood for over 20 years. And they told me that if they were gonna do things over again today, they would actually start by creating their own personal brands online. And then they might try to break into Hollywood, but chances are they would probably just stick to the personal brand because there's more opportunity there, right? So Hollywood has a ton of gatekeeping. There's a ton of politics as well. There's a lot of shady stuff going on. And then you have people like Mr. Beast that just got offered a billion dollars for his brand who launches $100 million companies like Beast Burger or Feastables with a single video. And they also told me that a lot of people in the lower and mid-level positions in Hollywood are really tired of all the woke BS that constantly gets crammed down their throats, but they're too afraid to say anything, right? Because if they said anything, they'd probably lose their job and they wouldn't get hired again. So this is why you need to go where the opportunity is. That is the slogan of the channel because most people just go into a career because they saw it on TV or because their friends said it was cool or because they happen to know somebody in the career or because their family wants them to or something like that instead of going into the career for the right reasons and doing the proper research. And that is just gonna lead to a ton of anxiety and unneeded stress that's completely avoidable. Number eight on the list is going to be fine arts at 7.4%. Okay, so art is something that is constantly changing. Art that was considered good 50 years ago isn't necessarily what is considered good today. And all you have to do is look at just about any type of art, from movies, music, to fashion. Now, another thing you wanna notice is typically the people who make the best art tend to be under 35 years old. This is probably because young people tend to have what's known as fluid intelligence, whereas older people have crystallized intelligence. And that basically just means that young people tend to be more creative. So if you want to be successful as an artist, if you want to do art as a career, probably the worst possible thing that you could do is go to art school for four years and spend $100,000. Because by the time you get to pay back that student loan debt and actually start your life, you're probably gonna be around 40 years old. Like seriously, I think that getting a useless degree might be the single thing that has killed the most hopes and dreams of artists. So getting a useless degree is probably the worst thing you could possibly do as an artist. And I don't have time in this video to go over it in detail but definitely check out the book Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. I was a little worried when I first read this book because I thought it was just gonna give you the typical, you know, follow your passion advice that you hear parroted by everybody, but it was actually refreshingly practical. So this book gives you practical, actionable advice on how you can actually make money as an artist. And the author of the book agrees with me that typically college is not going to be the right answer. And if you wanna see an example of this, just look at Ashley, who was an artist that I interviewed, who went through the college system and had a terrible experience experience. And then she was able to land a digital marketing job and start her art company on the side. And the reason she was able to launch her business on the side is because digital marketing is an in-demand skill that gave her the time, money, and flexibility that she needed to do that. So yeah, you can definitely check that video out. It's a great interview. Number seven on the list is going to be a liberal arts degree at 7.6% unemployment. All right. So liberal arts is really interesting. And my personal favorite subject might be history. And I absolutely love reading books from authors like James. James Michener and Leon Uris. I also love listening to Dan Carlin's Hardcore History podcast. And he talks about things like the fall of the Roman Empire as well as the rise of Genghis Khan. But does that mean that I would get a history degree in order to study this stuff? Absolutely not. Well, during college for a brief period, I actually thought about doing this. So what did I do? I took some history classes and what I found is it sort of ruined my passion for history. So they made me read and write essays on parts of history that I don't particularly care about. They also made me do really tedious things like memorizing dates and all this stuff can be looked up in five seconds so it seems pointless to me to just try to memorize it because you're just going to forget it two weeks later and on top of that I could tell that many of the professors were extremely biased and yes they were teaching history but they were really teaching their version of history which didn't necessarily align with reality so I quickly figured out that I didn't want to actually major in history because it would kind of ruin something that I really enjoyed doing as a hobby but ironically by not majoring in history I started this YouTube channel and I get to include historical anecdotes like I did in this video. So I definitely would not get a history degree. And I think the same thing goes for like 99.9% .9 of people out there. And with a liberal arts degree, you'll have time to ponder the deep existential questions like, do you want fries with that? No, really, do you want fries with that? But all joking aside, if you know any friends or family members that could use this type of advice that need some practical advice like this, definitely send this video to them. I get a ton of comments from people who actually found my channel because a friend 
friend or a family member sent it to them. When I was making this channel, I wanted to make the resource that I wish I had when I was 18. All right, so number six and five are going to be a tie, and that is gonna be studio art at 8% and commercial art and graphic design at 8.1% unemployment rate. So typically, especially with degrees like this, university is gonna teach you the bare minimum that you need to know in order to do the job, right? So it's just gonna give you an overview of a bunch of different things. It's essentially teaching you how to be a generalist. And the thing about that is you can access all of that type of information completely free online. Now, there are some college degrees that actually teach you how to be a specialist. And of course, we're not talking about those in this video. And I cannot emphasize how important it is for you to be a specialist because there are plenty of talented artists all over the world. For instance, there are people in the Philippines who are really talented artists and they can do the same type of generalist type work for a fraction of the cost. And the funny thing is, even with the degrees that are relatively specific, for instance, there's universities out there that will literally let you create your own degree. It's almost like the Build-A-Bear workshop of degrees. Like for instance, there's universities out there that will let you do a YouTube studies degree, for instance, and spend $100,000 on that. But I wanna ask you a question. Who do you think is gonna be more successful? Somebody who goes to college for four years and studies a YouTube studies degree or somebody who just spends four years making YouTube videos. I absolutely guarantee you that the person who's taking action, making YouTube videos for four years is gonna know way more about YouTube than the person who does a YouTube studies degree. Because as a professional artist, whether you like it or not, your value is based on the opinion of other people. So the only way for you to get better is to put your art back there, make sure to get feedback from it, and then make it better the next time. Passively consuming information or even studying information in a university is not going to make you an expert on the subject. And an art degree is a great way for you to turn your love of art into deep, deep debt and no time for enjoyment because you're working two minimum wage jobs trying to pay off your student loans. Number four on the list is going to be general social sciences at 8.2% unemployment. Now, one thing I didn't include on this list that is extremely important is underemployment. So unemployment's really important, but underemployment is something you should look at as well. And that basically includes people who are employed technically, but they're not doing anything that is anywhere near related to what they actually went to school for. And in many cases, they're working minimum wage or close to minimum wage type jobs. So one degree that leads to a ton of underemployment is psychology. There's 127,000 psychology graduates per year. And I think the main reason for it is because psychology is really interesting. I mean, I love psychology. I think it is super interesting. I even took extra classes in psychology. But do you think there's 127 entry level jobs available, especially at the bachelor's level? Definitely not. And so this is why many of these people end up unemployed or unemployed underemployed. And the people who do end up getting jobs, of course, have to go to graduate school. And remember, half of student loan debt comes from grad school. So it's essentially just an upsell. So for most people, getting a psychology degree or a social science degree is kind of like going to a restaurant, paying first, and then you get to see the food, but you never get to actually eat it. Number three on the list is going to be an international business degree at 8.5% unemployment. So I was slightly surprised to see this one on the list because the statistics for it are relatively decent. But but I think one of the big reasons for this one is simply because people don't plan ahead enough. So if you're going to do international business, you need to be a specialist. It's incredibly important, right? So you probably want to be a specialist between two different countries or cultures. So for instance, you could be somebody who is an expert in international business between the United States and Mexico. This of course would require you to know how to speak both English and Spanish, but you'd also have to be familiar with the countries, cultures, business laws, etc. And most people simply do not think this far ahead. They just study international business because they think it's interesting. They get the degree and then they aren't able to get a job. Number two on the list is going to be linguistics and comparative literature at 10.2% unemployment. So this is another one where it is fairly interesting, but there is simply no jobs for this skill set. If you want to make money writing, for instance, you do not need to go to school and become an academic technical writer in order to make money. Because the truth is the people that are going to pay you, your audience, typically they're not going to be professional. Professionals. They're not going to be academics. They're not going to be professors. They're going to be normal people. Those are going to be the people who are consuming your content. And by the way, I believe artists and creators are going to absolutely dominate in the next 10 to 20 years, but it's not because they went to college. In fact, I think you're going to have a massive advantage as an artist if you don't. There's never been a better time to either be a creator or work for a creator. And working for a creator that's already successful is basically like getting paid to have a mentor. So if you want to learn how to be an effective communicator, again, it all comes 
comes down to either working for a creator or just start creating on your own and make yourself a portfolio. There's basically no barrier to entry here. Anybody can just start writing online, releasing it and start getting feedback. Number one on the list is going to be an architecture degree at 10.6% unemployment. And an architecture degree is a perfect way to learn how to design buildings that are too expensive for anyone to actually build. So this is another one that probably surprises you a little bit. And I think it kind of falls under the same category as psychology, where it's just inherently an extremely interesting subject. I mean, who wouldn't want to design a building and then see that project come to life? So this combined with the fact that you're probably going to have to get a graduate degree leads to a supply and demand imbalance. Architecture degrees are also extremely challenging. And there's a lot of talented architects out there. But unfortunately, there's not that many businesses hiring. And this is why it's so important for you to go where the opportunity is. And it all starts with properly researching the correct college degree to get. Click here to see the ultimate guide to choosing your college degree.